Let's talk about the two JZ. Powerful, this one capable of 1250 at the rear wheel. It lost number one and number two cylinder. Blown head gasket still weighed 900 at the back wheel. Quite a feat. It should get back to its usual 1250, 1200 horsepower on E85. About the 280 Z, 240, 260, especially with throttle bodies like this one, individual throttle bodies, they should make good power. This is going to be a monster. And of course, we're looking at the BMW six cylinder. Powerful, impressive, great looking engine. Hello, thank you for tuning in to Ben Almeida Racing. Today we will touch on six cylinder inline engines. I've owned a, a two, 280Z years ago when I was going through college. Then of course <clears throat> I have a Z4 uh, BMW today uh, and I had a Mercedes but that was a V6, uh, the SLK. Uh, but today we'll touch on the inline six from Toyota 2JZ. BMW <clears throat> inline six and of course the 2JZ. Uh, what I will highlight here are the differences which I feel has an advantage or disadvantage and uh, we'll go one at a time so uh, we'll start with the BMW uh, intake port angle then we'll switch over to the 280Z and then the 2JZ okay and then we'll highlight or basically uh, show what the differences are and then we'll proceed on to the intake port to the exhaust port so forth and so on okay i uh, hope you guys enjoy this and uh, it's not the, my usual v8 stuff but it's also part of learning and i think uh, we all learn from different configurations just not just the v8 four cylinder eight and later on i'll do a more detailed uh, uh, video on all these engines okay we'll cover the rod length uh, bearings and all that uh, oiling system and I hope uh, uh, give a better understanding of what's going on okay so uh, let's start quick intermission I am uh, not including the RB engines from the GTR or the Godzilla because of the fact that I haven't really worked on them at length. I've helped out the, the guys at the DNR Garage in Las Vegas. They do a lot of GTRs, and they asked me before to look at the blocks. How come they're running 100, a little more uh, oil pressure in them? And I analyzed the block itself, and I found out, or my impression is, the main galley is sorely lacking in uh, diameter. It's really, really very, very small compared to the 2JZ or the BMW main oil galley. This is, I feel, is the problem. Okay, and I don't want to do anything with the cylinder heads because I didn't work on them directly and got my main run and got my impression on them. I'm just helping Ron out there uh, with the porting, intake and exhaust and combustion chamber, whatever needs to be done. I'm, telling him some stuff uh, but if it's done uh, I can really make an assessment on it or if I flow it myself and I can really get a, a better feedback to all of you but this said um, like the 427 Ford side order blocks because the FE blocks had issues with oiling the bottom end and I feel the 2Js I mean the the 2JZ or the BMW or the Datsun Z don't need to jack up their oil pressure too high, but the RB engines do. And uh, like I said, upon close inspection, I noticed the main galley, the main oil feed galley to the crank, to all five main bearings is uh, very, very small. So I showed them some ways to uh, circumvent that uh, and add some external lines and feed the last three main bearings. Um, maybe that would fix it, but we'll know as soon as they test. Look at the port angle on this BMW 6. Very impressive. 
line of sight, direct, perhaps superior tumble, mixture motion. It is high port compared to the 2JZ or of course the 280Z. Look at the distance right there from the deck. It's almost standing straight up. Equals to big time flow numbers. High port. JZ intake port. Take note of the floor, the height of the port floor, and look at the height of the intake port roof. Compare this to the BMW. The BMW is pretty doggone good. Here's a 2JZ. Look at the height of the intake port floor to the block deck. Unlike the BMW, which is really far from the deck of the block, the floor is a lot more elevated compared to this one here. This one you can see is not a high port. It's a 2JZ GTE. Look at the height of the floor from the deck. It's a lot taller, so I haven't flow tested this yet to see if it's got the same intake valve size, but if it does, compared to the regular 2JZ and the kick on the floor, that should help it on the short side, and perhaps this is a definitely higher port angle. So this might have more potential. I just don't know how it looks like on the exhaust. If they're all kinked up and twisted up as well. We'll see. This is the intake port height on a 280, 240, 260Z. It's fairly high. Okay? But it's an inline, non-hemi or 4V configuration. It's a two-valve a combustion chamber, one intake, one exhaust. It's pretty good. The only direction is um, the way the intake comes in and the exhaust comes out at the same point or the same uh, direction where it came in. A little bit, um, I think that's a net negative, but it has some attributes. Looking at the yellow flow path or signal shows the intake port flow path on this thing. Not only is it a cross flow, but if you notice the green arrow also shows the height of the intake port compared, I mean compared to the 2JZ. This is very high port angle. And you can see the, the red line where I put like the tumble situation where the port comes in. It hardly has any swirl or nothing at all. Okay, so it's all tumble motion. Again, let's look at the intake port height on the 2JZ. It is obvious what you're looking at. It's not as high as the high port BMW. As well as check this port angle again. This is the intake. You have a left and right side. They're all different, coupled with the different exhaust, the different exhaust exit angle. You look at a little bit different on the intake port angle. Like I said, I prefer that the cylinder heads are symmetrical. There's nothing symmetrical about this. The yellow arrow or lines shows the flow path of this 280Z head or 240 or 260. It's actually a low port angle. And notice on the short side, it makes a drastic turn on the right side. Really, really bad as far as uh, um, airflow is concerned. But it's very responsive. is the BMW exhaust ports. Look how impressive those are. They are symmetrical and should flow the same amount. Interesting. Compared to the 2JZ. Now you're looking at the 2JZ cylinder head. 
You look at its, the different angles. It's not symmetrical on the exhaust. Look at the left. Here you go. This one's perfect, straight out from the intake coming in. This one's very, well, somewhat fair. This goes the other way. And this one really goes extreme, exit out to one side, just like the cylinder right here. So you're looking at six different exhaust port angles here. Take note of that. The extreme ends are pretty much in a trajectory. The next, you know, uh, outside ones are some basically same angle. And then the two center ones are a little bit different, but somewhat straight. There are issues here for all out racing. You want symmetrical ports, intake and exhaust, especially when you're tuning high levels of boost, you know, horsepower and RPMs. This can become a factor. The 280, you can see the floor has been flattened on the intake port, and it should be a pretty darn good flow and solar head. This has been cut, cut 40 thousandths, milled, and of course the combustion chamber has been CNC profiled or digitized. As far as you can see, that I've highlighted on all these three engines, the BMW has the highest port angle. No different than a V8. Okay, when on a V8 uh, six, uh, cylinder head, if the port is on a higher position, it takes a straight shot to the valve or a line of sight. So that when you look at this from the port, the intake flange, if you can see more of the valve, more likely it will flow uh, better because air doesn't want to turn. If you have a port that's a little bit to the left or to the right, or it dives in too much, it doesn't like that. It wants a straight shot because air wants to flow in a straight um, velocity, all right, or speed. Velocity, I think, for me, if I remember correctly, velocity is, is a speed with direction, okay? And uh, a straight path is what uh, airflow on a cylinder head wants to do. It doesn't want to take a turn or doesn't want to turn. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at here is the BMW was far superior than the 280Z. Whereas the 280Z is, should I say, not really the worst of the bunch, but the least efficient. Because right now with an intake 4V head, the intake comes in and slides through the exhaust. Okay, so you got to watch out on your uh, lobe uh, overlap. Um, because it has a tendency to um, blow the column charge through the exhaust and at the same time an exhaust would have also a tendency to um, blow back into the intake and it is really uh, um, well without VTEC or any kind of uh, uh, valve uh, uh, control or you know, where it advances the intake and the exhaust slope or retards whichever way the manufacturer decides with their, uh, with their combination. Um, it's a lifesaver for a 4V head, all right? And uh, not like the old school Hemi where uh, it has a big combustion chamber. This 4V pent roof style, they lower down the, uh, the area around <clears throat> the, the depth the combustion chamber isn't as deep as before. And then with the center located uh, spark plug, the flame propagation uh, is more evenly, uh, should we say, uh, it, the burn pattern is so much better instead of a V8 where you have it only on one side, more on the exhaust side of the cylinder head, 
and it tries to climb over a dome or even if it's a flat top, the lean condition on the very end towards the, the short side is the least or the last part to get uh, consumed and that's when uh, secondaries or detonation exist uh, leading to uh, pre-ignition so forth and so on when everything starts to get hot. Now we're looking at the 4V combustion chamber. This is typical, be it import, anything short of F1, but all or almost all street type 4V heads manufactured by Honda, Mercedes, whatever. Uh, you know, uh, even the motorcycle, they look similar to this, except the other ones have a quench pad right about here and right here at 6 o'clock. And then the other ones have them also at 9 and 3. That said, I still believe that a quench does uh, function and provide a better burning combustion chamber. And also, what is advantageous to this thing is the centrally located spark plug. When that spark plug initiates combustion, they start spreading around from a sphere, it starts building up. Now, most of the fuel that came in this way on both valves, the heavier fuel particles slam right about this side of the cylinder wall. And some of them will try to turn around in a tumble situation but they don't quite reach that general area. That in itself is the lean area directly underneath the short side radius like I showed in other videos. The heavy air and fuel particles will not make this turn. Just like the back windshield of a car, that is the back windshield of your car. It remains dry. Most of the fuel is over here. Okay, And when that happens, you have a lean condition, flame front expands, and sometimes with boost, nitrous, or normally aspirated, the temperature and, and uh, uh, pressure spikes in this general area will contribute to secondary ignition sources. It will explode or auto-ignite, whatever you might call it, and there you go. That's why it usually ends up cooking the combustion chamber on that side. And when you see me with my directed V groove, I go this way. I put a V channel there and there. But the amazing part is sometimes they burn right here, certain makes, and sometimes they burn right here. Okay, so was it suffice to say I put three? Well, that might be overdoing it, but it probably would help. Okay, and even here on the bottom, since it's slow burning here, here, when you put a V channel to initiate combustion and consume this area that is basically isolated because the quench sometimes impedes the flame from getting to those isolated areas because of a tight, tight space in between the top of the piston and the combustion chamber. Therefore, let us just wrap this discussion there's hardly any swirl here it's mostly tumble okay because you have the splitter port here and the the manifold wall outside wall tend to go this way so they really don't have much of a uh, mixture motion they're they are dependent on tumble motion hardly any swirl therefore um their inherent weakness is the ability of the exhaust once it exited out it creates a, a low pressure behind it and then at the same time when it loses energy it wants to come right back up and shoot back up on the intake when the intake valve is starting to open and exhaust is starting to close and the pistons coming up want to chase the exhaust valve a lot of exhaust reversion can and will happen. That's why sometimes VTEC closes the valve earlier 
or opens them up late depends on the RPM range that we're talking and also I will go on another video later how an engine with ITBs okay individual throttle body like a Weber or an electronic throttle body is superior in the prevention of reversion into the intake port as opposed to a, uh, a spider type intake on a you know V6 maybe a V8 uh, where you have constant vacuum around the plenum that gives a lot of of help to the reversion pulses really it's a net negative so basically we make more torque out of a uh, ITB V8 four cylinder six cylinder when you have a Weber setup or whatever uh, intake your your you actually choose to run they will produce better mid-range stop end and everything else okay as opposed to a, an intake manifold with a common plenum ITB's Weber's are superior because of the prevention of reversion I will explain that on future videos here's Here's our buddy, the 240-260-280Z head or other, um, basically 180 head or not a cross flow. Okay, the Hemi, the dock, uh, single overhead cam, Hemi heads, whatever, uh, pet roof, they are a cross flow, meaning the intake comes in and shoots straight to the exhaust. Now here we have the 280Z. It comes in one side, the intake, Combustion starts to happen and shoots to the right and come back <laughs> in the same direction it came in. And I said before, an engine is a processor. It's not an air pump. An air pump means what you push in, it pushes out. It didn't change anything except maybe the pressure and density with it. Here, we induct air and fuel. There's a chemical reaction when you combust or start ignition and then it covers the most of the combustion chamber then when exhaust valve opens up it goes reverses the direction and goes the other way not like with the the hemi they go come in ignition sh straight out okay and here it has to do a reversal this is a fairly high intake port not too bad on the Z but here's the kicker this issue here that kind of restricts this ability of this one at high rpm to process the air and fuel okay that's what I'm trying to get at here what it does is that when it comes in and wants to tumble in at the same time it turns this way see that it has a tendency to swirl that's why even though this head are kind of handicapped because of this uh, flow potential that we're looking at with this engine or combustion chamber, it has a lot of mixture motion, active. They come in, tumble, at the same time swirl and out the exhaust. It creates a good combustion characteristics or combustion um, effectiveness. Therefore, I noticed these engines, and then this is not even cut yet. This is the way it is from when we pulled it off. Look at the burn pattern. It's lazy. The only clean part here is the quench. Okay? And that's telling you what's going on with a somewhat uh, open chamber. Lazy, lazy, lazy combustion uh, characteristics. When I cut the Z head 40 thousandths, I made this closer to the piston and I digitized the head, which I will show here. Digitize the head to match the piston dome. And what we have is an effective kind of a mixture motion enhancement from the combustion chamber interacting with the top of the piston and pushes everything towards the center, boom, and ignition. Here also, when I cut 40 off this head, it has a taper that created 
somewhat of a soft chamber head that is prevalent in today's racing world or racing cylinder heads. I don't think the Datsun people knew about that back then. They probably just ended up by accident. They're trying to cut down as much of the compression ratio as they can. And they put a dish on the piston and a somewhat, uh, well, what should is a proper word? Not elevating dish, but uh, more of a uh, an angle change here. It looked like three to five degrees, okay, from the end of the cylinder wall to the center of the combustion chamber. It's angled just like a softened head. This is the 280Z head. It's been milled 40, 40 down. The tapering of, of the quench side or softening of the head is very effective here. Therefore, like I said, I have been and I have driven Z that are turbocharged. The head potential is really poor, <laughs> but because of this mixture motion potential that is exhibited by this kind of cylinder head, it is doggone responsive. Okay? Remember, like I said before, the last five degrees before TDC, two thirds of the fuel is burnt, and the last one third burns when it gets past TDC to 5 degrees after coming down on a downstroke and if you had an effective mixture motion initially whatever is left on the very ends and, and isolated spots of any combustion chamber that is an added kick All right, that gives you that response that mid-range where the engine doesn't fall flat in its face because it has a lot of help from the added mixture motions of swirl and tumble and also of an effective quench that slaps the dormant fuel on the ends and throw them towards the center to further enhance the burn. This is the downfall of the BMW in line six. Check this out. You can see straight through to the other side. This is solid, but this is also hollow. Okay? You will not get good support there. You can see it right there as well. Okay? I am concerned about that. You don't have much support. That's why possibly we don't see this at very high RPM, high boost drag racing engines. Road racing is fine. That is definitely a concern. You got a vented bottom end. This is the BMW crankshaft. Look at the aero treatment on the counterweights. You can see that there. Okay, you can see right there. A little bit of aero treatment they did. It looks stout, but is it better? Don't mind that. That keeps that thing from rolling towards the end of the table. But how good is this compared to the 2JZ? Hmm. I know the bottom end isn't very good. But what do you guys think? Uh, be the 2JZ block is pretty doggone stout. Check this baby out. You cannot deny the fact that this bottom end is stout. That's why a lot of 2JZ has really done uh, well at the drag strip. And they're very, very impressive. Given a lot of the V8 guys fits, they produce the power, no doubt. Is the bottom end on the 280Z? I'm running 240Z length or longer connecting rods. The crank is stout. Look at that. That's also a forging. And I detailed all the saddles because it's very, very, I mean, the casting marks are all over. So I cleaned those up. 
so that cracks don't start. Modern man is fairly decent. At least they're all tied together and all this gusseting all helps for the strength as opposed to what you'll see with the BMW. This attachment to 240, 260, 280Z crank. They're all constructed the same material, forged metal or forged steel. And when you look at here, this is actually a 280Z. It doesn't look as stout as the BMW or the 2JZ. The 2JZ looks the most impressive, but otherwise this can take the punishment just as well as the others. The bottom end of the 280Z, 240 and 260 are decent and uh, can take a lot of pounding as opposed to the BMW. So I give this thing credit. I am impressed. This red uh, ramp <laughs> that I have on this cylinder head is exactly what I removed. Okay, or maybe I just thin that out and put a, like a little uh, ridge there. So that because this is like a, a speed bump for the airflow. Definitely not a good idea. And I removed that. So I have a nice ramp, especially it's a high port angle to the short side. Okay. We're done up. You notice that little ramp earlier is gone. Okay. It's not there anymore. So this one picked up flow. This is a 280Z head. I did a lot of intake port work. I widened the sides of the floor and raised them up quite a bit. And I streamlined the divider wall between ports, left and right port, to their respective valves. Basically, this is impressive. There's a slight variation in the injector bosses there. They're a little bit different, a little offset. Uh, hopefully that the spray pattern to the valve is uh, even on both sides because they just move it a little bit. It's not really symmetric in that regard. Not the port itself, but the injector uh, opening or injector bosses. Look at the 280Z. Right here is the block deck and look how high the intake port is. It's fairly high or let me let's well let me just say this fairly. This is the intake port height on a 280, 240, 260Z. It's fairly high. Okay? But it's an inline non hemi or four V configuration. It's a two valve a combustion chamber, one intake, one exhaust. It's pretty good. The only direction is um, the way the intake comes in and the exhaust comes out at the same point or the same uh, direction where it came in. A little bit, um, I think that's a net negative, but it has some attributes. This is the BMW exhaust ports. Look how impressive those are. They are symmetrical and should flow the same amount. Interesting. Compared to the 2JZ. Turbocharger side. Check out that nice turbo manifold. There's a ported exhaust port and the one on the left is stock. This blue line represents that part right there where I did not widen it at that point because I got figured if this is already way too big. I need to accelerate the flow out of that pocket. And as you notice, this center port is just way too big. Okay, so this is really detriment. There is a big discrepancy. I made the one on the left a little bit bigger to compensate for the sheer size of the middle exhaust port. And we need to address that. That's why that blue line, I did not even widen that right there. I think it's fine. 
This is the outer exhaust port, not the two center one, which is way too big. But this one here needs some work as well to at least equalize flow because the big exhaust port uh, is indeed flowing more, but it doesn't have the velocity to pull the incoming air column from the intake port. This is better, I feel. And that's the way it is as cast. And here's when it's ported. I widened it and raised it up to equal and uh, but better velocity than the two super big exhaust ports on the Z. Nice, isn't it? If you notice, the head studs of the two JZ is a lot fatter. Or so it seems from what I can remember because this is years ago. But I think uh, compared to the 280, this has got a lot more shank in it. I don't know, remember, or I do not remember what the actual diameter was, but it's pretty big compared to the 280Z. And I have an issue with the cylinder wall here, and I will uh, highlight in the next video. This is a 280 dome pistons. The head's been cut 40 thousandths. And look at this. All right, studded. Looks pretty doggone good. It is a very good stop cylinder. Or it's got a stop block. Amazing. This is very impressive. You see this excess on your engine. This is telling you that you're having issues with the bore perhaps distorting. One, two, three. Yeah, that's three. Uh, it's uh, having some bore issues there. So it's perhaps detonating or something like that. Okay, something abnormal. Because it showed on the bottom end as well. It's actually very late, but I wanted to add this part to uh, uh, give some more clarification and understanding. And uh, before I forget, and I don't want to leave this out, one thing, uh, we all uh, grew up with uh, inline six-cylinder engines, usually, just like uh, the 2JZ, uh, I think the Ford 300 or uh, it's so long, the slant sixes and all that, they have, uh, yeah, I think the slant six also, but the Chevy and the Fords, and the, uh, the other uh, makes even import uh, six-cylinder, especially truck engines. You notice they have very, very good torque. Considering uh, the fact that they are low compression, eight and a half to one, no more than nine and a half or even nine to one, the majority are really very low compression. But you wonder why they have such great, great torque down low and you don't need to rev them up, they just pull, they can, you know, pull a tree stuff from the ground if need be. One of the reasons for that is just this, exactly, it's not a cross flow, it is a uh, reverse flow head, okay, meaning it reverses its flow path. And like I explained earlier with the Z, is that that exaggerated U-turn, it enhances the mixing of the mixture inside the combustion chamber, enhancing low speed torque. Okay, just like when you have compression, it smashes the mixture really, really good. It disperses them and have a more complete combustion. The swirl or the the coming in of the air column and then reverse back tend to really create this swirling uh, mixture motion that enhances combustion. And even though it doesn't have the max airflow as a um, cross flow engine or a Hemi or a pent roof, it more than makes it up down on the low speed range in its ability to have a very, very good response. Perfect for a truck engine. Not only that, 
it's not a V layout, it's an inline six, it's standing taller. And I think most of them have a longer rod than usual. Okay, not like on a V configuration, the engine's basically done in a compact way to save space off to the side. Uh, then the rods become shorter, the deck becomes shorter. Uh, inline six cylinder engines, usually pretty tall, long rod, and that, you know, reversing cylinder head. Okay, uh, it does uh, create this tremendous low end torque, but that's all. I hope it makes sense to you guys because it does to me. <laughs> Thank you.